<laughs> yeah, this is the McNeely Room, and uh, it's named for uh, a professor, John H. McNeely, who, um, when he came to El Paso in like 1948, he came to El Paso and he discovered that the library here had almost no books in Spanish or about Mexican history. And that was his area of interest. And so he made it his business to go out and buy books in Spanish for the library and books about Mexican history. And his wife, at the time, with a very small baby, said he dragged her all over Juarez to every used bookstore and bookstore where they sold books, buying books. And so over the years, he gave the library thousands of books in Spanish and about the about Mexican history. So when they built the new library, they named a room for him. Yeah. He was very proud. He was extremely proud. He was very proprietorial about the room. And by then, he, he was already retired, but he would come in every Wednesday morning and wind the clock. You may have seen me winding the clock. I, when I forget to wind the clock, I feel like he probably is rolling over in his grave. You know? Well, uh, this is a, a series of drawings on the fourth floor and a book from Texas Western Press. It's called Writers Across the Centuries. And so I use this bookmark from Texas Western Press that shows a lot of uh, horseback, <laughs> horseback riders uh, on the bookmark as the opening thing. So Jose Cisneros was born in 1910 in northern the in a little town in the northern part of the state of Durango, Mexico, and uh, and we found this little the picture of him as a very young man up there. We found uh, in in the El Paso Herald Post records, and it looked like it was like maybe a passport picture or an ID picture because it had staple holes on the top. And our, our uh, photo archivist said he could, he could fix them for my slideshow, and so we took the, the, the staple marks out of the top. But look how young he looks, and then there's a picture of him in his prime, and then there's an older man. But uh, anyway, he, uh, his early life, his family life was disrupted by the violence of the Mexican Revolution, and the family had to move several times, and they ended up in... Ciudad Juarez, and he was able to go to Lydia Patterson Institute to school to study, and uh, while he was also working at the same time, and he, uh, but so, but despite all the r rather rough start to his life in the middle of the Mexican Revolution and poverty, and his family lost everything when they had to flee from their their home village, uh, he turned out to have a very successful career and be uh, widely admired all over the world, really. And here is a picture which I got from uh, John West's uh, biography of him. And this was in his personal collection. And it was the, the first drawing that he made which has survived. And it was, and it was a picture of, of a Spaniard on horseback. And with it, with a little girl and a dog, and and he gave it. And his uh, at one point during his childhood, uh, he had taught himself to read, but and his and his uncle dis discovered that he had already taught himself to read, although he wasn't going to school. And so his uncle took him to San Miguel de Allende, where and and so that he could attend school. And so he attended school there for a few years before they moved to to Juarez, but. Uh, he was only 12 when he did the, the drawing, pretty good for a 12-year-old. And uh, then in Ciudad Juarez, he, he, several of his illustrations were used as used in Mexican magazines and other uh, sort of ephemeral publications in Ciudad Juarez. And he also entered a competition to design uh, the seal of the city. And, uh, he, and Armando Chavez, the historian of Ciudad Juarez, encouraged him to enter, and, and it was the winning entry. And, um, but then, when, it, when, he, when he moved to El Paso, he wor worked at a number of different jobs. He worked as a window dresser at some of the department stores down downtown. And they said, in his biography, they said he was delighted because there was all of this cardboard that they only used once. And so he could take it and draw on the back of it. <laughs> and so it was hard for him to even find materials. But, uh, but he got a job painting buses for the uh, city transit company. And so there's, I found this picture. It's not very good, but I found it in the Herald Post files. It's just a clipping 
uh, that's with the glue coming through, staining through, but shows him painting a bus with a paint sprayer, and then a picture of two young ladies with, uh, admiring the, his artwork, which looks like a bullfight scene on one of the buses. Then in 1937, as the story goes, he took some of his drawings to show to Tom Lee, who was then painting his giant pass of the North mural in the federal courthouse. And Tom Lee was impressed enough that he took them and showed them to the library director, Maud Derlin Sullivan, who had built actually quite a good art collection at the El Paso Public Library and did uh, art exhibits there. And so she uh, gave him his first solo art show <laughs> at the public library. This is a picture, not, this is the only one I could find find uh, in my just-in-time planning for my PowerPoint. Uh, that, that's a picture of Maud uh, Sullivan, J. Frank Doby, and Tom Lee. But uh, Cisneros went on to illustrate a lot of books uh, in, written by El Paso authors and other Western authors. And uh, for instance, here is uh, Bill Timmons. He, he did uh, a couple of books, several books that Bill Timmons was author or co-author of, including Morelos of Mexico and then the, the classic history of El Paso, a borderlands history. And we have, uh, we have his, for instance, a lot of his original illustrations in our collections here at UTEP because we have the W.H. Timmons papers in our, in our archives, as well as the, Jose, the as, as well as the Carl Herzog papers. He was the designer. And we have the Sonicson papers. C.L. Sonicson, known as Doc Sonicson, also uh, uh, knew Cisneros and got Cisneros to illustrate several of his books. And then um, Jose Cisneros also knew Cleophus Calleros, who was, who was a sort of a popular avocational historian. He wrote a little column for the newspaper called El, pa El Paso Then and Now, and, uh, so, and, and he wrote several small books and, and had uh, Jose Cisneros illustrate them for him. The picture here is when they went for a ceremony with the Tiguas, and uh, and I guess they were made honorary members of the tribe, and so they're wearing headdresses with feathers on them. I, there's another one where he has paint across, where Cisneros has paint across his <laughs> cheekbones. <laughs> but uh, he, but he also one of his biggest fans was the uh, folklore, professor of folklore, an English professor, John O. West, and who became his biographer, but he, he did the cover art, for instance, for this Mexican-American folklore book, and, uh, and also for another book on cowboy humor. And so, uh, and John O. West collected copies of his work and would bring them to us, would bring transparencies to us of every new piece that Cisneros made so that we had a collection of Cisneros' new work in color. And surprisingly, Jose Cisneros was colorblind. And so it's... But his... But he, uh, he, he, did, he did colored things anyway. He kept all of the, the pencils, the colored pencils, had, had the colors written on them, and so that he knew what colors they were, and his wife, Vicenta, would help him choose the colors. But he, he, did, he always said that his, uh, his mentors were Tom Lee and Carl Herzog, and they were all lifelong friends, and Herzog, uh, introduced him to a lot of book people and authors and, and also commissioned him to illustrate a number of books that Carl Herzog, a printer and book designer and typographer, uh, designed. So here's a picture of Carl Herzog with, with a composing stick and, and uh, pulling type for, some, for something. Yeah, the, the, this the journey of Fry Marcos de Nisa, what got many accolades as an excellent book 
a well, very well designed book when it came out and it, it was listed among the best books of the year on several lists. He also, uh, was because Carl Herzog started working at, U at what's now UTEP in 1949, I think, he got uh, Cisneros to design the seal for Texas Western College and then for the University of Texas at El Paso. There's a picture of Cisneros working on the seal of the university. But it may be that a turning point in his career was when he got a fellowship to go to the Paisano Ranch. And it was, uh, this was J. Frank Dobie's home and retreat outside of Austin. And uh, they're rather prestigious uh, fellowships uh, for mostly for writers, but some artists also received fellowships and they were able to go and stay at this uh, little country house out in the middle of nowhere where they didn't have to worry about making a living. They got a $3,000 grant, which back then I guess was enough to live on for three months. <laughs> and so Cisneros and his wife and their, their youngest daughter and their little granddaughter all went there and lived in this little house in the country and he was able to just concentrate. He didn't have to paint buses. Nice. He, he could just concentrate on drawing, uh, drawing uh, the, especially the horsemen that he'd been working on had started doing a series on horsemen. And also in, in, when there outside of Austin, he was able to travel to the university in Austin to do research and also to the Institute of Texan and Cultures in San Antonio, where they did, in fact, do a, uh, they did an exhibit of his work, his work uh, there in 1969. And there's a picture of him and Vicenta and their little uh, granddaughter at, at uh, Paisano Ranch. Yeah, they said, said that at first uh, his, uh, his boss at the, at the city transit company didn't want to let him go, but fortunately the, the, the supervisor, the bigger, his supervisor didn't want to let him go, but the supervisor's boss said, yes, this is very prestigious, he should go. And then there was a Riders of the Border, ooh, I didn't put him on one of the slides in here of the picture, but uh, he, the Texas Western Press has a series called the Southwestern Studies Series, or they did for many years. And so this was number 30 in the Southwestern Studies Series, Riders of the Border, and it was uh, 1971, just a couple of years after his uh, fellowship at the Paisano Ranch, and they did this uh, short uh, monograph uh, showing uh, writers with short with te text uh, describing the writers written by Cisneros. And then, he, and then a little bit later he did Faces of the Borderlands, <laughs> where it, another Southwestern Studies series book number, uh, mm, I guess this was number 52, I have the numbers mixed up maybe. But uh, there are copies downstairs in the exhibit case that y'all can take a look at when you, we go down to the fourth floor. And then in 1984, the definitive version of his horseman drawings was published by Texas Western Press. Riders Across the Century, Horsemen of the Spanish Borderlands. And uh, the, the, the slide here shows the front cover and the back cover that shows saddles. And then the slipcase had a spur on it, and I'm not sure how the slipcase was supposed to go, but, but according to John O. West, the spur was, was embossed upside down. And so they, it wasn't really distributed with the slipcase because it was, had, been, had been manufactured incorrectly. And he said it was ironic because Herzog was always such a stickler for details, and yet they did this, uh, this elaborate slipcase that had the spur upside down. Makes it more collectible. Yeah, I bought it in a book sale downstairs for a quarter or something. But anyway, and the, but here's a quote: uh, Jack Jackson, who some of you may be familiar with his work. He's written several books on Texas history. He started out as a cartoonist, but uh, he uh, uh, he was a fellow artist and a historical writer, and he reviewed the book. The next year, it came out the next year in the Southwestern Historical Quarterly, and this is what he said. 
Those of us who prize the historical illustrations of Jose Cisneros have reason to rejoice in his long-awaited masterpiece, Riders Across the Centuries. No other artist has come close to him in capturing with pen and ink the equestrian tradition of the old, tradition of the old Southwest. And this volume, the last that will bear Carl Herzog's imprint, is a fitting tribute to his skill. And it was, indeed, the final Herzog imprint because Carl Herzog died that year on July 24th. And I mentioned that, uh, that he, the, the illustrations owed a lot to uh, Cisneros' wife, Vicenta, because she helped him, uh, helped him select the colors that he used uh, on many of the drawings. When we go downstairs, you'll see that some of them are just the black and white pen and ink drawings, and some of them have the clothing colored in, in bright colors, and some of them have backgrounds uh, 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 in different colors. And so you can see that, that coloring the drawings may have been difficult for him, as, as being completely colorblind. But then, and then Haskell Monroe, the UTEP president from 1980 to 1987, was one of Jose Cisneros' biggest fans. And he worked to acquire the series of drawings, 100 drawings, uh, to be included that were in the book Writers Across the Century for the new university library when it opened. There was a budget at that point for art to buy, specifically to buy art for the library. And so we have a whole folder I was looking at earlier today about acquiring art for the library. And at the, 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 the piece of paper I, lo I opened the folder up to, it said they had $200,000 to buy art and they had, had already committed $35,000 to buy the Cisneros drawings. And so this is one of the few uh, things in the library that I know how much we paid for it. It was $35,000. And, and I, got a call, I got a call the other day that the business office needed a list of all the art in the library and how much each, of, each piece was worth or how much we paid for it. And please send it to us yesterday. <laughs> but, but, but fortunately, I didn't know how much the Cisneros drawing had cost in 1984. And, uh, and then Texas Western P Press continued to feature Cisneros in his work and new publications, including John O. West, Jose Cisneros, An Artist's Journey. And, and then also there's another, another uh, Jose Cisneros biography by John O. West. But uh, I met Jose Cisneros when I came here. I said, I was saying that I came for a temporary job and stayed. But shortly after I came, there was a big, big party, a big ceremony down there on the fourth floor where the pictures are, where, uh, uh, celebrating the fact that Jose Cisneros had uh, agreed to sell his papers and his book collection to the library. And, uh, but he was going to be allowed to keep them and, and keep them at home until he didn't need them anymore. And since he was then in his 80s, we figured probably he wouldn't need them for that much longer, but it turns out, no, he lived to, to, to age 99, and, and so he didn't relinquish his books and papers. And in fact, he, they eventually, the sale was rescinded, and, uh, and the, his collection went to J.P. Bryan, the J.P. Bryan Museum in Galveston. So Jose Cisneros' papers and books are there. Jose Cisneros uh, received many honors during his long life, but, and I can't really list them all here, but two that stand out were that in uh, October 1990, he and his wife were named Knight and Lady of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre. Uh, equestrian being very appropriate, of course, considering what he was most famous for. But then, and then the year later, in July 1991, when well, I guess you were in Spain, maybe, yes, I was. Uh, Jose Cisneros was knighted by Juan Carlos I, the King of Spain, as a caballero de mérito, de mérito I think. Mérito civil, and my typo in the, in the slide, of course, for his work regarding the importance of Spanish contributions to the settlement of the Southwest. 
and uh, he here's a picture of him at his home, and look at all the little horse figurines in the background. <laughs> but his home in 2007, his house over there on Waco Street, and he died in 2009 at the age of 99. I think they were already planning his his 100th birthday, but it, it, he didn't quite make it. And uh, UTEP Library doesn't have his papers, but we do have those 100 drawings downstairs on the fourth floor and many other uh, examples of his work because we have Herzog papers, Sonicson papers, John O. West papers. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Thank you. I hope I'll, I hope I'll, I hope I'll see some of you up here as, as researchers. <laughs>